Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome to another exciting heart stopping, heart pounding, heart stopping, they both sound good, video tutorial where we're going to take a look at creating a very cool effect where we're going to go inside of the chest cavity into the subcellular level of a human being. If you can call this a human being. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, this is my friend Val Couples, who was very nice enough to come out after a long game of golf and uh, shoot this scene for us. And uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. Now, as far as what's going on here at the end, I, you know, maybe some sort of blood disorder. If I had to guess, I would say it's the result of eating too much generic brand cereal. Let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is create our particle. Now, we will be using a 3D program. So let's go ahead and get started right now. Okay, so here we are in 3D Studio Max, and we're going to be creating our blood cell. And first we have our healthy blood cell, and then we have our unhealthy blood cell. Now, we're using the exact same particle with two separate materials. Now, of course, most of these techniques should translate to your other software. If you have questions, I'm sure there's plenty of 3D forums out there that wouldn't mind helping you out. I will be making the renders available to download with the project file, so you don't need any 3D program at all. Okay, so I've reset my scene, and I'm going to go over to the Create Palette, take my sphere, and click in the perspective view and create a nice ball. And then what we're going to do is go to the Modify panel and we're going to increase the segments to 100. And that way there's a lot of mesh to deform. And then with the mesh selected we're going to choose Modify Noise. Now it may go off the frame but trust me, noise, it's there. So what this is going to allow us to do is sort of distort our sphere and make it a little bit more organic. So we'll go ahead and uh, just start playing with the strength. I'll go ahead and start it out at 50, 50, and 50. And so we've started to kind of deform it. And we can also bring the scale of the noise down, which will kind of create an interesting look. And you can also do some pretty wild stuff with this, but uh, we'll just try to keep it simple. I just want to sort of distort it a little bit, just like that. And then we're going to go back to the Modify panel, and we're going to choose Stretch. And then we're going to go back to the Modify panel, and we're going to choose Squeeze. And uh, we're going to edit both of these. And we're going to start with the Squeeze, I'm going to turn the amount to a negative number, and in the front view we see sort of it kind of enclosing on itself, sort of collapsing on itself, and we want it to almost touch. Perfect. And then our stretch is going to kind of smush our mesh. And we're just going to kind of flatten it out just a little bit. So say negative 1, negative 0.1. And uh, there we go. We have a nice particle. So we're going to bring up our materials. And I'll hit M. And let's see here. Let's start out with the color. We're going to use a map for the color, a, uh, what do they call those, a procedural map. Now instead of adding a color, we're going to add a map. And we're going to click on the add map and we're going to go to uh, the 3D maps here and we're going to choose fall off. And then we can choose OK. And the fall off uh, procedural material, um, what this does is allows you to set two colors. And basically how it works is the faces of the mesh that are facing the camera are going to be one color and the edges like if this is a basketball the edges of the side are facing away are going to be another color so what we're going to do is set the front color to a dark red and the side color to sort of a light reddish orange and we'll go ahead and apply that now, if I render this out now, there's sort of a default light in the scene. So I'm going to go to my uh, Create Palette, click on Lights, and we're going to add an Omni Light. And we'll just click it and just add it to the scene, doesn't matter where. And if we go to the Edit, and then if we go to the Modify panel, 
we're gonna simply uncheck diffuse and specular and just make it an ambient only light. And we'll go and render that out. So now there's no shadows in the scene and everything is equally lit up. And now we can see that effect that we were after where sort of the edges and the faces that are not looking at the camera are gonna be sort of lightly shaded, sort of like an inverted, uh, you know, cellular look, like a X-ray kind of look. Let's go and move on. Um, we can play with this a little bit later also. So I'm gonna go and go up to the next level and we'll go down to the maps and we're gonna add a bump map. And a bump map is sort of a 2D, you know, bump looking uh, material. And then we'll click on none and we're gonna add a noise map. So that's what it's gonna look like at the default level, not too impressive. But what we'll do is set the size to one. And you can scale the materials up and see kind of how they're gonna look. Basically we want sort of just a texture so that it doesn't look so flat. So that looks pretty good, but I think I wanna go even smaller. So do like 0.5. Yeah, looks nice. Okay, next thing we'll do is go up again and we're gonna set a displacement map. Now a displacement map actually displaces the mesh at render time. So we'll click on that, click none, and we're gonna add a noise modifier for it as well. Set it to fractal. We can double click. Now the size also should be relatively small. So we'll set it to five and I'll go ahead and preview render that. Okay, so that looks pretty wild. Now. I don't want it to be that wild, so we'll go and bring the displacement down to maybe 30. Well, maybe we'll bring it down a lot. I think for the uh, healthy cell, we want it to look pretty good. We don't want it to look too, uh, you know, exaggerated, but uh, definitely nice to have some texture. Now we can also go up and add just a little specular highlight and that way it just has a little bit of uh, character. Now, right now we only have an ambient light, so we need to create a light that's gonna have a specular uh, shine. And so we'll go back to the Create palette, we'll click on Omni, and we'll add it to our scene, and then we'll go over to the Modify panel, and we're gonna do Uncheck Diffuse. So now all that's happening is our specular highlight is added. So we added that, but we didn't add any other illumination to the scene. So that creates kind of a nice look without having to, you know, have to relight. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate this light and uh, just uh, clone it, make a copy. You can just do a copy paste, but we're gonna add another light to the bottom. And also, here's our top view. I wanna add it to the bottom and then to the back. So just sort of a backlight there. Pretty nice. And I'll also bring the brightness down for the backlight to 0.5. Now first, let's go to the time setup, and we're gonna set the length to 120 frames. And we'll select our mesh. Uh, looks like we have a keyframe here. I'm gonna delete that keyframe. And uh, we'll turn on auto key, which can allow us to animate. And unlike After Effects, with the auto key setup, anything you change automatically adds a keyframe, because there's so many parameters that kind of works better that way. But we'll go forward to 120 frames, right click, select rotate. And we're gonna rotate this just about 360 degrees. So just keep spinning it till it's really close. And that looks pretty good. Now, 3D Studio Max adds a nice soft animation by default. So. You can see it sort of slows and stops, but we need to take that off. So click on this button that brings up our track editor, and then we can just double click on that to bring it out. And our mesh is selected, so we can see our keyframes, and you can see there's an easy ease curve added to it. So we're just gonna select them both, and click on this line, and that basically says, hey, make it a straight line. And so now we have a perfect linear animation, and uh, that's what we want. So we can render this out, but first let's create our crazy particle also. And remember, 
we're not actually creating a new particle, we're just making a new material. So I'll take our first material, drag it over to a second material slot, and we'll edit it here. So basically we'll go to the color, diffuse color map, change the front side to like dark green, and the sides to sort of a light pale green. And we'll apply that to the footage and we'll rename the material I don't know, green. And let's hit render. So there's our green particle looking nice. And let's move down and we'll go to the displacement map. And instead of a noise map, we're going to click on it and we're going to click here to change the type. You can also delete it just by dragging a none map to it and just remove it. But we're going to click and we're going to add a cellular map. And this is a pretty interesting type of material. Just kind of add some really weird uh, noise. And go ahead and render that out. So as you can see, it's looking pretty crazy. But we can uh, move up the level and bring the displacement down to like 40. And uh, just keep playing with it until we come up with something that we like. Um, of course, uh, this is uh, this is where the creativity part plays. You're just going to want to create something that looks cool. Um, you know, you're just trying to tell a story. You know, who cares if it's not perfectly accurate? And there'll be a couple of medical doctors sitting home saying this is BS. But you know, they hate their life. So, you know, you get to do visual effects. Now, we don't have to worry too much about perfect colors in 3D Studio Max because we're going to bring them into After Effects where we're really going to fine tune them. So let's go ahead and render this out. And uh, before I do, I'm going to bring the specular brightness of this one light that has the specular and just bring it down to like 0.75. I can also adjust the material, but that's okay. Okay, so that way we're not blowing out the, uh, the edges there. So now we need to render this out. And to do that, we're going to click on the Render dialog, this guy. And we're going to set a range, because we want to render out an animation. We're going to set a range from 0 to 119. And we're not setting it to 120, because that is our loop frame. Frame 0 is exactly the same as frame 120, because we rotated it 360 degrees. And we'll set the width to 400, and the height to 400. And the reason we're doing that is because our particle generator, also known as trap code particular, works a little bit better with a smaller sized particle. And we'll just move in to make sure that this sort of fills the frame. I'm just using uh, sort of the zoom tool here. Okay, so now we set the range set the size and we're going to render output and we're going to set a file so click on file now I made a folder called 3d renders and we're going to create another folder and we'll call this green cell 2 and we'll open that folder up and we'll call this green cell 2 and we're going to save it as a PNG image now you can do this out of any 3d program and what it's going to allow us to do is maintain that transparency around our mesh. And so I'm going to click Save. And we'll go ahead and use that output setting and alpha channel included. I'll choose OK. And by the way, you can edit that. If you click on Files, you can uh, you know change it to any other one. There are other formats you can use. But click Save and ch -ch -ch -ch, click Render. Go take a break. Okay, and then we'll also render out our red particle the same way. Just make sure you change the file output to red cell 2. And uh, before we render it out, we're going to go hit M and apply our red cell material instead. And our red cell is going to render. And uh, I'll see you in After Effects.